Let's turn to the next slide. Slide number seven, or page seven. Jesus did God's will. In John chapter four, verse 34, it says, Jesus says to them, my food is in order that I may do the intention of the one having sent me, and I may make complete his work. This is a true Bible study translation. So Jesus not, is not talking about physical food, eating physical food, but what strengthened him, what gave him the nourishment to carry on in his life, to do the things that God wanted him to do, is that he, his whole intention, Jesus' whole intention, his will, his active volition and desire, everything in him is what he wanted to do, was to do what the ones who sent him wanted him to do, and that one, of course, is God. Jesus Christ wanted to do what his Father asked him to do. Why? He says, and I may complete his work. That work, of course, is the work of redemption and salvation to save mankind. That's the work that God wanted him to do. And that's what, that was Jesus' food. It just kept him alive. It kept him going. Let's look at John chapter 5 and verse 30. It says, I am not able to do not one thing from myself. According as I hear, I judge. And the judgment, my judgment, is righteous. Because I do not seek after the intention, what intention? My intention, my will, but the intention of the one who sent me. Again, in this different record, Jesus again saying, what I hear my Father telling me, that's how I make my decisions. That's, the word judge means to make a decision. You know, you don't have to be sitting in a judgment seat to judge. We make judgments all the time. You know, what, am I, what do I judge I need to do right now in my life? Well, for Jesus Christ, he wasn't walking around saying, well, now what do I really want to do himself? He was saying, what does my Father want me to do? And he decided that he wasn't going to do one thing all by himself or me. But he what he heard from his father, that's the judgment he made. That's how he decided to move ahead in his life. And he wasn't looking to do his own intention all by himself. He wanted to do the intention of the one having sent him. God's intention. Let's turn to page 8. And we look at a little bit more of what God's intention for Jesus Christ's life was at that time. Um, I'm going to look at my book on Matthew. Let me turn to Matthew chapter 4. And I'm going to begin in verse 23. And he, Jesus, used to lead around in the whole of Galilee, teaching in their synagogues, and heralding forth the good message, or the gospel, of the kingdom, and attending to every disease and every sickness among the people. Verse 24, And the thing heard of him, or his fame, went out into the whole of Syria, and they carried towards him all the people having badly, being held together with variegated diseases and torments, being devilized, being lunatic and paralytic. And what did Jesus do? He attended to them. So Jesus went around among the people. He wasn't locked up in a room somewhere. But he went out among the people and he taught them God's word. And the people heard about him and they came to him. They carry towards him those people having badly. That means they had something bad in their body, something in their physical body that wasn't meant to be there. Something that was contrary to what God would want them to have in their bodies. 
being held together, some people were held together, what? With a lot of diseases or torments, pains, or being devilized. Maybe there was devil spirits attacking them. They carry toward Jesus all of those having badly, being held together with variegated diseases and torments, being devilized, and being lunatic. Lunatic means epileptic. They thought at that time, of course, that it was related to the moon, and that's why it has that word. And also those people who were paralyzed or paralytic. And Jesus Christ attended to them. He didn't say, I don't need to talk to you. He attended to them. He took care of them as necessary. He healed them. And let's look at Matthew chapter 10. And we look at verse 1. Matthew 10 verse 1 says, And having called towards himself his twelve learning disciples, he gave to them authority of unclean spirits, so as to throw them out, and to attend to what? To every disease and every sickness. So Jesus Christ at that time was able to give authority to other people to do what he was doing. Remember, Jesus Christ had received Holy Spirit from God. He was also able to delegate to other people, namely his 12 learning disciples, to do the same thing. God also gave them Holy Spirit just the same as he gave to Jesus. And they were able to go out and help people. They were able to cast out devil spirits from those who had them. That would be unsafe people. And they were able to attend to or treat people therapeutically of every disease, any kind of sicknesses, you know, causing physical decline, or any kind of sickness that was debilitating or causing them to be weak. As we read in the four books of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we must understand that Jesus was in the process of accomplishing redemption and salvation. And as I mentioned previously, they, Jesus and his 12 learning disciples, had Holy Spirit, which was not the same as is available today, but it was Holy Spirit, and it was very sufficient to be able to cast out devil spirits or to be able to heal people. So let's close this session here and we'll continue.